Welcome back everybody. So this is a pretty exciting video you're about to watch. Uh, it's kind of uh, the final chapter to a buck that you know everybody that hunts in our area knows pretty well. You know the neighbors have been watching it, we've been watching it, uh, we've all been hunting it. It's uh, really kind of the one big deer we have in the woods that uh, is down below our barn. So it's it was really, you know, the one deer that we were all after. And it was a buck that we call Rocky. Super old, uh, just huge, massive eight point. And uh, this is the buck that I'm going to be hunting on this video. And uh, I want to just kind of give you a recap on, on the story of this buck. So uh, Carl started picking up trail camera pictures of it in August down on the creek bottom uh, in his food plot that we planted down there right off the edge of it. He was bedding down down there. Just a massive deer as you can see in that uh, photo right there that I'm showing you. And uh, Carl named him Rocky at that point and uh, we we kind of kept track of the deer throughout the fall. There's a period of time that he disappeared and uh, I'm pretty sure when he disappeared he crossed the road and went in over on the neighbors and was spending a lot of time there and he actually spent uh, most of his time on that side. I don't think that he was really uh, spending much time on our side of the road at that point and it wasn't until uh, right the second week of November we started picking up tons of trail camera footage and video of this buck and it was actually the uh, the night, the evening before rifle season opened I videoed him walk right across the field below our barn and uh, broad daylight just cruising right through the middle of the field it was like oh my gosh you know the day before rifle season and uh, so that's really the buck that I've been focused on you know the the whole first part of this rifle season was trying to get that deer killed uh, I think for the first part of our rifle season he had crossed back over well I know he crossed over the road onto the neighbors uh, I talked to the neighbor and he actually had an encounter with that buck I think the first or second evening uh, it was back in the woods off of uh, one of his food plots and he didn't have a clear shot at him there's some brush and, and stuff and he elected not to shoot at him knowing that you know their woods doesn't get pressured at all and, and likely you know that deer would stay right there uh, I'm not sure exactly why he ended up back on our side of the road. I think uh, you know there's a myriad of possibilities that could be uh, food, even though I know there's you know actually way more food on the side that he was spending all of his time on. But there could have been a hot doe. In fact, uh, in, I don't want to give this hunt away, but you'll see uh, it could be because of a doe that that he was on our side of the road at that time. But we do have more food on uh, below our farm this year than we normally do uh you know that winter wheat the deer have been absolutely pounding that stuff and uh the neighbors actually have a, a little bit of standing corn right there which uh is enough for the deer to uh to pig out on every night so let's get into the hunt and uh let's let's uh put a stamp on the final chapter of uh rocky pretty awesome Good morning everybody. It is uh, the morning of November 25th and <laughs> what are you doing Scout? Just lounging and relaxing this morning? Uh, I'm gonna head down below the barn. I'm hunting the buck that I call Rocky. Uh, I really don't know where that buck is right now. Uh, he might not even be there. I have no idea but I think that's my best bet for this morning. It's super cold out. Uh, seems pretty calm. We're going to get down there in the pines and uh, just sit and see what happens. Uh, we'll see you in the woods when it gets light. Oh, I made it down here. Uh, I'm not, I'm not going to go to the tree stand, at least right now. There are some deer out over here in the corner of the field. So I snuck all the way around and just got in the edge of the woods and I can see down into this bottom right here and this is a high ridge in the pines. So I found this down log. We're just gonna set up here and, and uh, watch for a while. I don't wanna just go barging in there and possibly boot them deer out of there. So we're just gonna try to like hunt that area right from the edge without going in there right now at least. We'll see how it works out here. I just had a deer 
deer sneak up on me out of the swamp and winded me. Took up running out in front of me, but this wind is swirling something fierce down in here. And I can't really see far enough through here to make it not matter with a rifle. They can smell me before I can see them as an issue, so I think we're going to uh, try to get the wind more in our favor, get up on top of that, maybe in the tree stand where the wind's more consistent down here in this bottom and just going everywhere. We can't have that. So I'm going to try to sneak my way up through there as quiet as I can. Man, I hate walking through these woods when I think that deer's in here. Just scares the crap out of me thinking I could bump him out of here. We don't want to do that. of the stand clean and then right the last second I bumped a few deer out in front of me. That was the last thing I wanted to do. Man, I was so tedious getting up here making sure I didn't step on any sticks or any mud that would make any noise. Those deer must have been bedded about 60 yards from the stand. I hope that they didn't know what I was. I just hope if that buck's in here, they don't blow him out. That's the risk you take doing that type of stuff. But we're going to uh, sit tight and give it some time here. I keep getting glimpses of deer right here behind me, but I can't seem to get a good pinpoint on what they are. The one I got a good look at was definitely looked like a spike. But there's other deer that were running around over there acting a little spooky. Uh, that I couldn't see other than there's the tails. I don't know, maybe I got them better on video than what I could see, but there are deer moving around. I just got eyes on Rocky. He was with a doe. I just got a tiny glimpse of him. The doe went down into the swamp over here behind me. Rocky was right on her. I didn't get any video, but there's no doubt. I got like, I seen like three seconds of him in an opening back here. He went down into the swamp through the creek bottom. Oh my gosh. Just seeing that deer. I'll push that dough back up out of there here in a little bit. Well, I'm gonna be sitting here all day knowing that deer's right down here below me. You know, that confirms he's here. Well, I just heard a gunshot right where Rocky went down into the creek bottom and Carl's sitting down there in his hunting shanty, so 
I think Carl just shot him, which would be absolutely awesome if he did. See how long it's been since I've seen him. I texted my brother as soon as I saw it. I texted him at, looks like, 8.01, and he just shot at 8.13. So that thing was moving. He took, I guess it's not that far. From where I seen him to where he got shot, it only was 10 minutes. I'm waiting back to hear from Carl. Yep, he says he thinks you got him. Oh my gosh. Now I'm fingers crossed he freaking put a good hit on that thing. I better be ready if he didn't, because that thing's gonna be coming back. What's the scoop, Carl? He's done. He's down. You, you killed Rocky. I killed Rocky. Oh my god. He couldn't, he couldn't move, but I come up and put one more in him just so I can't, I still ain't seen where I hit him. I might have, must have spined him. Oh my gosh. But he couldn't. Dude, I am so but, freaking happy for you. It's freaking, oh. I couldn't believe it. He'd been playing freaking in and out all morning down here. I kept seeing him. I had him come by me like 15 minutes before you shot him. He's on a, he, had, he was with two doe, wasn't he? Oh no, the one I saw was Rocky. I seen him plain as day. And the last time I seen him, he was going right toward the creek bottom. He come toward the creek bottom with two doe, but there was, and then oh, those two doe came across the bottom by that big foot, that triangle tree, tree stand the Amish have there. Yeah, yep. And, and he must have come along through here, and I got one, I got one good look at him, and I got on the rest, I must have spined him, because he couldn't move at all. I don't know Man, I was... Him. I about had a heart. I about had a heart attack when he went by me. Did you? Oh my gosh! I saw the. I've never shot in my life. That's a I've hell. Of... More than four point. Oh my gosh! That's a hell of a buck. That's the biggest buck we have over here. That's the biggest. You shot the biggest damn deer down here, Carl. Holy. Yeah, I seen. I seen a couple doe that were jogging through the woods. And I looked up, and that's, I mean, oh, I mean, you couldn't mistake it was him. It, it was like, holy shit, there he is. And I only seen him for like four seconds. He never, I could have never got a shot at him. Yeah. I was messing with my camera, and then he disappeared down into that swamp bottom, going right toward the creek. And then, I mean, he must have been chasing that doe all over heck in there. Oh, man, that's what, that's what it's all about, guys. I mean... You know, Carl is about as, as, as deserving of a deer like that as anybody is around here. You know, put a lot of work in with that food plot. You know, made that creek bottom a deer sanctuary and, you know, did his best to stay out of there. Ran the Cuddy Link system. He's been picking up pictures of Rocky, you know, all the way since, since uh, Velvet. He's got pictures of him. And, I couldn't be any happy, happier for him. I had fun chasing that buck for the first part of rifle season here, but now it's time to move on and go find another one. Couldn't be any happier for Carl to kill that deer though. Let's go check it out. Okay, everybody, we're at the scene of the crime. This is where uh, Carl was sitting this morning. And uh, right there's the uh, Braska food plot that we planted this year. He dug a big ditch in here to uh, get this drained out. This is pretty wet ground. And he took the took his backhoe down and dug that ditch out and it dried it out really nice and that food plot came up a lot better than you would have thought. This is awesome access into this. You can get in and out of this pretty much unscathed with any deer that are out in this bottom. Uh, he's got the railroad tracks right there and all this brush. Uh, next year we could even put plat screen right around the front of this and really block this off so he can't be seen at all. He can pop down, get up on the tracks, or even get on the back side of the tracks and walk all the way out to his truck. So it's just an absolute perfect setup. He's got a, a deer hunting mecca down here. This morning I was right in those pines straight across from where Carl is. There's Carl and his wife. I was straight in, right in there, 
And that's where I seen that buck and those two doe come down through. Put a good shot on it. Let's go check it out. Oh my gosh, look at that thing! Yes! Give me some skin! Yeah, that was true. Nice kill, that was a long shot too. Yeah, three, I, look at that slob! 300 yards. Oh my, he just not, he just broke that off too like three days ago Jeez. on the 20th. What a buck! Ain't that something? You're going back to the taxidermist. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no kidding. Oh my gosh, look at the bases on that thing. My gosh! What a deer, Carl. I ain't figured out where I hit him on the first one, but he never moved. I heard it thump. I did too. I was right there. Oh, you were right in that, 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 that uh, fire escape stand we got. Yep. He took the doe right, two doe right down here. Yep. And like 15 minutes later, whoop! I heard, I heard it hit. Oh, me too. I thought for sure when you shot him, like, that's a killing shot. I don't know where I got him the first one. What? A brute, Carl. I ended up putting one in here. He was still thrashing. He couldn't get up, but. Oh my gosh. I'll tell you what, your man cave is looking cooler and cooler after this year. <laughs> <laughs> we added a bear and a frickin'. Oh my gosh. Yeah, the bear was killed right in there yesterday. Now, the biggest buck in the block. I don't know about that. I told you to be patient. <laughs> I told you to be patient. Yeah. You know, that that funky spike was in here again today. Well, I'm glad you didn't shoot the darn thing. <laughs> yeah, Clifford kept saying, wait, wait. Wait, just be edges. patient, yep. And that's, there's another buck in here. A seven point, a big, it looks, is has he, four. Is that what he is? Yeah, he's got four on one side and three on the other. He kept, he was up there, he kept playing peekaboo in and out of the corner. I saw him, I was going to shoot him. Yeah. And I was just, I got so nervous, I couldn't hold the gun straight, dude. I was bad. <laughs> he told me and he's like, I couldn't believe it. I don't think I'd been so, when I seen this buck for the first time, like while hunting, I almost lost it up there. I'm like, I went to get the camera, I'm like, screw camera, like, get gone, <laughs> you know, like, but yeah. he was so fast. I mean, look at the deer, that thing looks like a heifer. Just a huge body deer, my gosh. Yeah. Man, I couldn't be any happier for you, Carl. Yeah, what a deer. It, man. You know, it's that makes everything all worth it. All the work, been, all the been work we did. Him and, all summer. Yeah, you know, he lived. I mean, he summered right here. Yeah. And that's how important it is to, you know, I say all the time to stay out of your sanctuary spots. Like the, you know, Carl deployed the Cuddy Link system, and he could check his home camera right up there, you know, close to the food plot where he didn't have to touch any of this. You know, didn't have to. Maybe I did hit him up here first. Didn't have to step in here at all, and you know, bucks like this. You bump a deer like this out of the woods, see you bye. That buck's been, that's an old deer, and he's been around the, around the block. Just a heck of a, heck of a buck. I think I did get him up in the, in the first Maybe time. I'll find. There's one there. Maybe I'll find this point shed hunting this spring and we can get it back on there. <laughs> Yeah, you can tell it's pretty fresh. It yeah, still just, looks a little... I, the first picture I got him with that broke was the day before rifle season started. I videoed him walk right across the back of our field the day before, too, that I can show on here. But, man, what a buck, Carl. You, I couldn't be any happier well, for you. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Thanks for all the help. Oh, this... Well, we wouldn't have put this, that food pot in there. This made it all worth it. Putting the stand up and yep. the whole works. You know, that shows how important it was to get that stand over on this side instead of tight up against that food plot because so you could cover all this bedding. Yeah. You know, in the evening it's great for the food plot, but in the morning, you know, they're in here in this bedding carrying on. And... Okay, everybody, my guess is 161. 161. And Carl, what's yours? 155. 155. We'll see. We're going to get it weighed here. We're, we're trying to get the scale figured out here, folks. Go the other way. 
Looks like the Popo's uh, looking to take somebody out right here in the center of town. <laughs> oh, thank you. I can say this. One seventy-eight minus twenty-four is one fifty-four. Yep. One fifty-four. You're pretty damn good, Carl. One fifty-four. You're pretty much almost right on it. <laughs> yeah. That's a nice one. Huh. Good guess. Can we already got your picture. Now do we need to measure today? Yeah. Jeez, what a good two days. Thank you. What's your What's your guess for outside measurement? Uh, nineteen and a half. Yeah, I think you're pretty, pretty much right on with that. Yeah. Where'd you get him at? Yeah. Heck of a buck, isn't he? I just seen his butt over here, so I was like, <laughs> I gotta check this out. We've been watching him all summer. What did we say the late 154. Big boy. Okay. Congratulations. Thank you. I'm gonna say 19. It is, boy, you're close. It is 18 and three quarters. 18 and three quarters. <laughs> I, I don't know what we're gonna go hunting for tomorrow. I'll give every I'll give you guys a shout out. If you need any Christmas trees right here at Necker's Company, they've got lots of them. Bring them in by the truckload. Did you tuck his tongue in? You need to tuck the tongues in. No, that's what makes it good. Yeah, you can't really tuck the tongues in. I don't know. Does he that's take what one makes or like the whole nice. body or just their heads? That's a nice I don't one. know. You want yeah. a body? Oh, I don't. Take care. as many pictures. <laughs> so there you have it, everybody. That is officially the end of the buck that we call Rocky. Uh, very fitting ending to the story with that deer. I uh, couldn't be any happier for Carl. It was, uh, I was really happy to be part of it and and uh, help Carl out. You know, get you know with the deer and. Uh, uh, we'll finish this video off with a little tribute to Rocky. I got a you know a bunch of trail camera pictures uh, and some video I'll put together at the end of this video, all in uh, yeah, order, you know, depending on the date. And uh, we'll finish it up. So I want to congratulate uh, you know Carl once again. And uh, going to be hard to beat that buck next year, but we should have some bucks running around that you know that will compare. So until next time. Thanks for watching everybody.